So you get so, yeah, so you got the type that. of wife. You got the type of wife that's like, "Hey, Dusty, come here. You got to see her tits." <laughs> True. That's a bad what do you think? <laughs> like, well, I can only really tell if you guys are both next to each other. Anyway, yeah. Right, <laughs> <laughs> you need that comparison. I see. Yeah, yeah. I, I just need to know what <laughs> I'm dealing see, with. Do you see how quick he was with that too, Ron? He was like, just like boom, he's just on it. You know, yeah, almost I've, I've been he'd there. done it before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This has happened. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to It's Just Bodybuilding. I'm your host, Ron Partlow, co-host Dusty Hanshaw. I guess he's on this side of the video. What are we doing? And of course, the producer, Scott McNally. Happy to be here, guys. This is, uh, you know, it's just another Monday, but um, today feel I'm excited about the episode. You it's know? it's Wednesday for them. It's, it's Monday Wednesday for, for them. us. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, so a little time travel. Remember, like, share, subscribe, comment, and... Ring the bell. Damn. Dusty. Yes. Ring Came the bell. Yeah. No, that was it's. You know what? I know we try to make the episodes good, but that's still my favorite part. <laughs> Everyone's favorite part. Most people turn <laughs> no. it off right now. If you look at the, yeah. the, the how long people watch, it's usually right you tell there. Like, yeah. I saw this. like 37 <laughs> seconds. Whoa, <laughs> what's happening around 37 <laughs> seconds? Yeah. Just sudden drop off. Um, it's great to have everybody. Uh, remember, I am mutant.com, mutant sponsoring the show, Born Hardcore. Go to I am mutant.com, get your ISO search, get your all in, and every single one of you needs to get on the gear. So go to I am mutant.com, Dusty 20, Big Ron 20. Do what you got to do. Just don't tell us so no feelings are hurt and get your <laughs> mutant. I don't want Ron to be okay. sad. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't expect you to you actually use my code. I just want you to be, I just want you to just, you know, help the show just, out, try us out. We appreciate the support. And of course, the uh, Patreon, Think yes. Big Bodybuilding Patreon, keep a producer homed. Thank you guys. Am I getting, am I getting uh, efficient at, you know, the all the, the nonsense that no one wants to hear anyways? You're really good at it. You're really good. Because yeah. I even forget some of that stuff sometimes. You have a program, you follow your program, and you... I think you're doing a good job. I think you're doing a good job. Yeah. Maybe. Well, you know, we kind of have to do those that 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 part. It, it's really important, and you know, true. Uh, it's like uh, I watch those long podcasts, you know, and then they'll like cut to like Joe Rogan will insert his own on it commercial. Yes. Right. Yeah. But you know what I mean. Um, and then other guys just like turn the camera and just go, are you looking for a new mattress? <laughs> <laughs> just right, right off the sheet. Yeah. I'm like, you know, you're watching some random, I don't know, just watching some YouTuber and you're like, this guy sell mattresses? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. You know, a lot of people at home watching in bed. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Okay. What's the lead topic? So I thought this would be fun. You guys thought this would be fun, too. And, and people, they generally tune in to have a good time watching this show. I mean, they might learn something in the process, but uh, for the most part, I think they're here for the entertainment. So the question is, is Not I train... The contest coverage? But they have that, too. They're in here for the, the contest coverage. Um, question for the next episode, I train five times a week, and I'm fairly strong. Um, but my back and legs kill me after five minutes of rocking my daughter to sleep. My uh, wife jokingly uh, craps on him for this. Um, what life activity are you surprisingly bad at and only got worse at as your bodybuilding career progressed? I suggested like holding the phone up to your ear. That is a skill that you'd like speakerphone was made for bodybuilders. I'll tell you that right now or hands oh. free, you know? Yeah. You, you know what? Um, I'll never forget. I uh, I started driving a Jeep Cherokee, like the old old school Cherokee. I can't remember what year that would have been, like 2004 or something. And I drove it for years and years. And then in, uh, I think it was like 2009, I bought a Chrysler 300. Oh, remember nice. those? And I bought yeah, like a I nice one. one. Like I, Yeah, I had one with like, it was nice. Like it had all the luxury stuff in it. It was kind of the nicest car I'd ever bought. It was only like a year and a half old. So it was really, really nice. It was dark blue. It was sweet. And, and everyone was telling me, man, you look great in that car. It really suits you. Because at the time, those were like really cool, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, and I remember thinking like, I really love this car, but I hate getting in and out of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Terrible. Because I, I, I had a Cherokee for so many years, right? And then, you know, I just kept getting bigger. And I think it was like 2013. <laughs> 
I rode off. My, someone hit me and rode off my car. And I took my insurance check and I went and got another, I went, got a Grand Cherokee. I was like, screw the cars, man. Because I, I just, getting in and out of cars when I was big, I just got worse and worse and worse. The bigger I got, the sore I got, the sore my knees got. Like, I just got worse. I hated getting into cars and sports cars. I wouldn't even ride in them. Someone gave up a Ferrari. They'd be like, want to go for a spin? I'd be like, nah, I'm good. Yeah. Like, like no. just. <laughs> That's a no for sure. Um, so this is simple and I think everyone can get this, but it actually does get worse, particularly when you're sore. Uh, the first thing I do every morning is the treadmill. I get okay. out of bed, brush my teeth, got a treadmill. It's also the only time of day where I wear shoes I have to tie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're a long, I mean, so I, I found my greatest location is the stairs and I put it on the second stair. Yes. And yeah. I kind of like push my knee out to the side <laughs> and sideways so down. tie. And then I got to try to position it in the middle still because it bothers me if my shoelace is to the left or the right. The knots like hanging inside. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. not. And you're just looking and you're like, this is my life. Yeah. I if can't. I see a guy with his shoelace is tied right to the side, I'm like, oh, he's disabled. Yeah. <laughs> and there I am. And there I am. And that's know? me. So, yeah, too. Yeah. That's, and that's why I, I recognize. Right? Like, I recognize. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're, in it's there. it's kind of like when though. a girl has fake boobs, she can see it, other girls that have fake boobs. You know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. Can really, even no matter what they're wearing. Yeah, they know. Yeah, I can yeah, see it yeah. too, though. But anyways. Um, yeah. <laughs> sorry. It's because they show them to um, you, Dusty. <laughs> <laughs> Valid. <laughs> I'm, I'm like a doctor. It's fine. They're like, hey, let's help I this know. guy with his bad laces. At least show him our tits. Um, but anyway. <laughs> so you, get, so yeah, so you got the type that. of wife. You got the type of wife that's like, hey, Dusty, come here. You got to see her tits. <laughs> True. That's a bad What do you think? I'm like, well, I can only really tell if you guys are both next to each other. Anyways. Yeah. Right, never <laughs> you need that comparison. I see. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I just need to know what <laughs> I'm see, dealing with Do you see how quick he was with that too, Ron? He was like, just like, boom. He just, ah. On it, you know, yeah, almost I've, I've been there. done it before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This has happened. Okay. So there's that. And then there's another thing. And I don't know how many people will know this, uh, that have this greatness, but I find in the middle of the night that every now and then you have an itch that cannot be scratched. You can't reach it. Oh, so I may or may not definitely do have a retractable back scratcher by my bed. At all times. It travels with me. It goes down to like, you know, a little pencil size yeah. and just shh, pull it out because it's not good. You get the scratch and you're like, I'm like on the bed and I'm doing one of these and Nikki's getting pissed. So, yeah, think about the things you can't reach as the bigger you get. Like, you ever see somebody that can like put their hand over their head like this and then the other hand behind their back and grab them together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That the, That weird... No, you know people that have never been over two fifty thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I put the belt in the pants before I put the pants on. I ain't trying to slide that shit through while oh, I'm no. wearing them. You, you get to that point, you put the belt and, in first. Oh, never absolutely. Never crossed my mind. Never and crossed smarter. my mind. Think about how difficult Dusty. that was for you at your biggest when you were trying to get back that back loop. Then you miss one. It's a <clears> debacle. Anyways, I've got one sorry. tip. I've got one tip for everybody here. Just so. A tip. Yeah, but just buy lots of belts and just leave a pair a belt in every pair of pants. Well, here's the thing: is that you you're always kind of wondering. String. You know, you're you're putting muscle on. You look in the mirror and you're like, "Am I am I starting to get bigger? Like, am I really jacked yet?" I'm going to tell you what: if you can cross your legs, you're not jacked yet. The gentleman sit. If you yeah, can do a gentleman no, if you can cross sit, your legs. Possible. Your your legs yeah. aren't big enough yet. If you can even put your heel up on the leg with like the other one at a ninety, that's also difficult. <laughs> All, if I, can I throw my that, leg up like that, my glute like real starts stretch. to stretch. Yeah, it's a glute yeah, stretch yeah. immediately. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. I'm basically doing physio if I sit with my legs crossed like in that fashion. Yeah, yeah. No. But the gentleman sit like the. the oh, the you mean sit. like? Is that what that is? Is like the all yeah, the way folded? It, yeah, yeah, oh, okay. yeah. The, you know, yeah. like your professors. Know. You know, you see a professor <laughs> sitting like that. <laughs> if you can do Jordan that, you Anderson probably don't even like squat. Um, if you can do yeah, that, you yeah, probably yeah. don't even squat. <laughs> you read a lot of books. You didn't do a lot of squats. <laughs> yeah. It's very valid. I'm trying to think. No, I've got that. I've got a friend that'll sit like that. I got a good buddy that'll sit like that once in a while, and it's funny because he just pulls it off. You yeah. just think, ah, he's a di distinguished dude in there. A little bit of him. 
It's little, not, you, you know, complete deviant. A little bit of distinguished gentleman in there. But he can also wear a bow tie at an event, and you're ooh. like, that guy rocks it. He's never, one of those dudes. So I never you can did just pull that. it off. Never wore. But you know what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I can't do it. Times I in my never... life, when I was smaller, I could wear a bow tie, but there was just cufflinks with it, and it was <laughs> a different time. <laughs> it was um, a different outfit. I so, needed yeah. money. I don't want like, any judgment. And most of those guys were very nice. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we just went for there. pay. This is awkward. It was just for pay. Yeah. Oh, no biggie. Ah, it was a 90s, <laughs> Dusty. No one's judging you. <laughs> the 90s. Who was There's it? No I, no there proof. was there was rumors. I can't remember if it was Gunther or Marcus Rule, something like, oh, when he went to the bathroom, he couldn't even wipe himself. His wife had to hose him down in the shower. Oh, no, that was Who? Kovacs. That was Kovacs. Kovacs. That's right. Great Kovacs. That was That's the right. Rumor, yeah. <laughs> that was the rumor. People said that stuff. Imagine being so big that people were making rumors up about you like that. Imagine if the rumor was true. Anyways. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know you're you know. huge. Have you guys ever delved into, um, like, Andre the Giant's real life? Have you ever listened to, like, the Jake the Snake interview or the Hulk Hogan interviews where he talks about Andre? Or have you ever read any of Andre's Just uh, what you've told us about like Andre the, the Giant? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, Andre, people don't realize how big he was. He was over seven feet tall. And he was 550 pounds when he died. And so... <clears throat> like people just don't realize how big Andre was. And you, you listen to the guys that tr toured with him, like, you know, the old school guys like Jake, the snake and Hogan and the guys that drove around in the vans in the early days with them and all that shit. And he would, sh he would shit in the bathtub of the hotel. You're kidding. Cause he couldn't use a toilet. Like he couldn't use the toilet. There's no way he could use it. He would break it. So he right. would shit in the bathtub and then he would just run the water and use a, and he would like, use a bucket and like wash it all like just insane you know yeah. stuff like that so he didn't have an easy life man and like i i'm i thought about andre like occasionally when i was really big because i'd be like man he's like another 200 pounds yeah like so <laughs> on johnny yeah like look at that on johnny carson he put a hard-boiled egg through his ring <laughs> really so, yeah he passed the heart he gave yeah he did that on johnny carson when he was on i think that's a that's from johnny carson there but um he put a hard-boiled egg through his ring so if you just think how big his finger was right but he would sit in the back of the van and drink like 36 beers like they would wrestle and then they would get in the van and they would drive like two hours to the next town and check into their hotel you know what i mean and they'd yep. get ready to wrestle the next day so that nighttime drive to the next town every time or whatever um, he would drink 32 beers in a couple hours, no problem. And they'd get out Jeez. at the next, they'd get out at the next town and there'd be 32 empty beer bottles in the back of the van. Like he'd drink a whole flat of beer and, um, it was just no big deal to him. It was just so huge. So yeah, pretty crazy, but yeah, brushing your teeth, getting a bicep pump, having to switch sides, having to brush but, left handed for the first time. There's Arnold. Look at that. So Arnold was tall. Arnold okay, six one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wait, here's a better one. Check this out. There's a little little better angle there. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Give you an idea how big Arnold was next to him. I don't know who that other guy is. Wilt Chamberlain. Plus, plus you gotta remember, like the world wasn't Distill. as as nice to size it is now. Like there are a lot more big men now than there were then. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. like look at sports, look at basketball, look at hockey. Like to be six four in hockey is normal now. Like there were like yeah. two guys when I was playing that were that <laughs> big. Was you it know Probert, I mean? like the biggest guy in the league at one point, and he's like two two twenty or something? Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's completely normal now. So I, I think that that's another thing. I think about that all the time. Like Ron, you know, when you when we get on flights, and we always sit in like the premium economy at least. Um, if if like we can't get bumped to first, and I always think to myself, okay, the width is little tight for me but i'm short i mean i'm literally 5'10 i'm thinking where does like jamie what does he do where does oh, his legs yeah. go yeah because it's tight for my knees in premium economy and i'm 5'10 i'm like where does 6'6 six, six go so <laughs> when we were i would i've got video of jamie and i riding in the back seat of uh, a, like a compact suv i think it was i can't remember it might have been george was driving and we were leaving the the mutant mansion going to the gym and I have video of him where, you know, the, the, the ceiling of the car 
is, you know, a couple of few inches above my head. And then it like goes up. There's like a little thing. It goes up in the back for like the cargo area. Right. And Jamie had to sit there like with his head in Lean that higher. Back. Yeah. In that higher part. And then the, the, the lower part like came up to his forehead that whole time. Like he was wearing a you hat. know what I mean? Yeah. I looked like a <laughs> child sitting next to him. I was looking at how much yeah. space I took up compared to him. He just, yeah. Big dude. Big dude. I, yeah. I was on a flight to Australia one time going to uh australia with mutant and so i was fortunate enough to be in premium economy because any overseas flights they put us in air canada premium which is that's those are such nice seats seats. yeah pretty air canada premium like i'm happy as as shit there right and this entire basketball team gets on and they're like (laughs) college level or maybe like semi-pro i don't know but they were all like Australian kids who had been in the States. So they must have been at like some basketball camp or something. Cause there was like 25 of them. Like it was, it was like, I saw them in the airport and I was like, holy sh- those are, those guys are all like, like six ten, you know, like, like really tall. Absurd. <laughs> and then they all got on my plane. I was like, oh damn, they're all on my flight. <laughs> they were all sitting, all sitting in coach. The whole team was sitting in coach and they were all just like spread out through the crowd. Like some of them are in middle seats and some of them. And, and I just remember every time I got up, I'd look back there and I was like, oh man, those guys look like they're just dying back there. Like their <laughs> knees are just pressed against the seats. Yeah. Like it was really odd. And I remember thinking like being bigs way easier than being 6'10 on a plane. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, being big is rough for everybody else, but being six <laughs> ten, that's just brutal on you. Like their knees are touching the seat the whole flight, man. Yeah. Yeah. So you can hang into the aisle or whatever. Being wide, it's not a huge deal. So, anyways, we've derailed as always. <laughs> yes. What's up? All right. I do have. I've got a, another one. So we kind of battled Fire. it out. We we're like, we didn't know what we wanted to do for our lead topic. We like that one, and we like this one. What training split did you guys get the most overall growth from? And I want to hear the story. Like, wh- like how old were you at that time? You know, what was bodybuilding like for you at that time? Okay. Um, well, I mean, mine, I think everyone knows the plan, which was DC training. Uh, it was 2007 that I started it. Um, but the reason that I was obsessed with the plan was... I had seen Justin Harris's pictures um, online before, and I just remembered seeing what he looked like, and I thought to myself, he's a big white guy. (laughs) Meaning, it's just, he's big, but it's not the prettiest thing, and I thought, you know what, that might be an achievable Hmm. thing to look at. You know, because at the time, you're looking at these guys that are all drastically different than me. And it was just kind of hard to digest. I was actually glancing through my pictures while I'm doing this to see if I had this picture of him. But um, it was hard for me to even think that I could look like them. So I found out that he worked with Dante and I hunted Dante down and asked him to work with me. And I reached out and it was funny, but I had just had a bad experience with a coach who didn't, who I hired and I told him I was gonna go to an event. And I walked up to him and said, hey, I'm Dusty, how you doing? And he didn't know who I was. And that threw me off because I understood like he's training a lot of people and he might not like not know me if I just walked up at an event. Yeah. But I let him know I was coming. I told him my name and then he looked at me and goes, oh, hey, what's up, dude? And shook my hand. I was like, and then he walked off. I'm uh, like, oh, weird. So anyways, I, I said, you know, I don't know if you know who I am, blah, 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 blah. So Dante responds back to me. He says, no, I know who you are. Um, you've done really great and uh, you're huge. So you don't need me. See ya. And I remember at first I read it and I was like, oh, that's cool. Like he does, he knows I don't need him. And I was like, yes, I do. <laughs> You're trying to trick me because I'm dumb. So <laughs> I reached back out and I hounded him as the long story short and got him to train me. And the, the thing that made it different, then this is the whole thing I want to remind people of is two things. Number one, it was the first time that because of the fact that I literally had to nag him into working with me. My promise to him was if I changed anything about his program, he could dump me immediately and never talk to me again. And yeah. I paid him 800 bucks and I was poor. So that was a ton of money sure. for me. I actually had to save it up once he told me the amount so I could hire him. Um, and because of that, I executed it flawlessly. No mistakes. I mean, no deviation. I was obsessive about making sure I understood what he wanted me to do, 
how he wanted me to do it. I'd send him videos, make sure I was executing not just the movement correctly, but the intensity and all those things. And that bled into the diet and on and on and on. And the reason I explain that whole thing is my true answer is progressive overload to me is the best way to put on muscle mass. It does not have to be DC training. There's not like it worked the best for me, but the biggest secret was progression and the fact that I was a machine about it day in and day out. And I think that's where most people slip with growth is they don't see a bunch of growth in three weeks and they change their program and they don't see enough. And then they change this and yeah. then they change that. And they're never executing anything long enough to figure out what would work when in reality, chances are everything that they were doing would have worked. Yeah. If they would have done it at the highest level of intensity, hopefully progressively and been consistent. So I, I made the most <clears throat> gains. I tell people this now because things have like, but I made the most gains um, when I was 17, right at the end of high school. So my last year of high school, I, after football was over. So like I started training like Dorian. That was when I started Dorian style because I was doing like just regular workouts before that, like four sets of, you know, four sets of bench, four sets. You know what I mean? Just like thinking in just terms of regular workouts, taking, yeah. mag you know, stuff out of Flex magazine and stuff. But, you know, um, I started training like Dorian and uh, I'd flirted with it a bit, you know, throughout high school, started tapering my sets down a little bit. But I remember I actually started training four days a week. Because I thought that's what he did. You know, that's what we were reading. So I started just training Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. And Friday was my leg day. So I would sometimes do it Friday. I would sometimes do it Saturday. And then I'd have Sunday off. And um, I started training like that. Would have been like 1992. Like, you right. know, end of 92. And I did that exact split. The Dorian split. And then when Blood and Guts came out in 97, I was like, oh, I'm already on this split. He's still on this split. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I just stayed on it. The guys in Australia I trained with were on it. So we just stayed with it. Literally didn't change a thing. We all trained exactly the same. And I stayed on the Dorian split until I think it was like 2004 is when I finally like was like, I think I'm going to have an arm date. Cause I thought right. my arms had to come up, you know, this weren't coming up at that point. And I was kind of being stubborn about it and I made some changes, but so essentially 10 years didn't change a single thing, barely changed exercises like hmm. leg Jeez. press squats. Like it was basic gym stuff. All those gyms were pretty basic. You're leg pressing, hacking extensions and squats and that's it. Yeah, and none of us, right. no one was lunging in the nineties, not until Ronnie came along. No one was lunging. They weren't a thing. And like girls were lunging and, you know, fitness people were lunging, but bodybuilders were like, they can't load that exercise enough. Screw that. Everyone was into like, what can you load effectively? You know? Right. So, you know, you know what I mean? So anyways, the, the point being is I did that for 10 years and I went from, I mean, you know, the, you know, it's probably about 210 when I started training like that, mm -hmm. 205. And, you know, by 2004, I was like three, you know, 320. So, yeah, that's a lot of weight, man. Yeah, but that's I, I when just, I literally got all, all the way up to 320 on that split. I, I love that's the thing that I connect with the most that I hope people get is basically the same split, a lot of the same movements, you know, because you get that a ton with clients like, can I change a workout? And I'm like, are you progressing? Why? Yes. Yeah. Why? Like, and I sometimes think and I like to remind newer clients when I'm going, like, I'm not being lazy. Um, and sometimes we will switch a movement, two movements, something that you've, yeah. you know, you've, you've run out of. But like oftentimes people will say, well, don't I need to shock my body? I'm like, yeah, the shock is getting stronger. <laughs> yeah. The sets. Like, the you sets know, the if, shock. if those are getting yeah. crazier, you know, my body was at sh in shock when my deadlifts were 405 for five. And then when they were, you know, 750 for five, my body was like, oh, that's shocking. Um, <laughs> that's a lot more. You know, yeah. so you, you kind of want to get to those places. Um, Scott, I just sent you um, a pictures. Um, that was what I looked like when I saw Justin Harris. That's him on the right. Okay. And I decided I needed to hire Dante. Um, so right. that was kind of like okay. my peak at that point. 
And then, so that was uh, 06 in that picture. So I didn't actually like, that was just my best look at that point. And I hired Dante yeah. in late 07. And then that picture was 2011 doing what he told me to do. Dang. So <clears throat> that that's, was. That's crazy. From 07 to 11. Yep. So that's what, so, five years. Yeah. So the the left picture actually, because that was, that was 0, late 06. But yeah, it's like, I mean, okay. just. A five-year time period and only like i said basically three and a half of that was with dante yeah and it was right. you know just just a night and you probably had with 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 you know maybe changing gyms the odd time and and a bit of variety you probably used about six back exercises the entire time <laughs> right right right. No, that's, right that's actually that's the funny thing is that's true i could literally tell you yeah every what, no, we try, did because try. once you do them name them so i would what? for width was um how, how many chins. how many did you actually do on a regular basis no rack so the, this was this would all of them so one workout would be rack chins with a smith barbell row that's the full back workout those two movements um okay. another one would be pull-ups with a deadlift and then right. the last one would be like I used to love the hammer pull down um, with a rack deadlift. There's hmm. my whole that's everything I did. Those three things, you know, those three workouts would rotate through and then you'd go back to the first one again and beat your numbers. And that is what I did essentially my entire career. And it used and to now, be funny because people would pick on me online. They're like, you keep posting the same stuff. I'm like, this is all I do. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing else to post. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Those pictures are crazy. I I also too have to pitch in about this that era where uh, Justin and Kuklo were training together. A very young Steve Kuklo were training together on YouTube. Those oh five. Yep. What what years would those have been? Maybe well, I saw those, him. Those weren't even YouTube, were they? Those were on the message boards. I saw yeah, I saw Kuklo two thousand and six, I believe it was, win his first show, and he just smoked. Yeah, like dudes that have been you know bodybuilding yeah, competitively for a decade. You know. Yeah. So it was even pre YouTube because those videos were on the message boards. That's where they were posting them. Justin was putting them up, and it was like a young Kuklo with him, and they were like doing stuff that was crazy, like. Justin was squatting six plates for like yep. sets of 10. Yeah. And then he would do a Widowmaker. He'd put 405 on and he'd do 20 reps with it. Yeah, just and grind it afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. I just grind it out. And then, you know, they were hack squatting seven plates and it was like, that was not common, you know. And I remember it, I was like super motivated. Oh, I'm going to hack squat seven plates now because like, but I remember they were just so strong back then. It was, it was mind boggling. And I knew they did this DC training, you know. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah, that was ex that picture, though, that I, I mean, that was literally when I decided because I was like it was, it was literally like what like, you know, when people talk about the the uh, their, their dream of, you know, a wrestler or whatever. I saw a guy who I, I didn't know, but I knew he was on the boards. And I'm like, I want to look like that. Like, it's just yeah. it was so freaky to see. And he's just, you know, out in his patio hitting a lat spread. And then I'm looking at mine. And I'm like, this doesn't even look like we do the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, you know, the, the last picture you put up, that was like probably one of the peaks of my career because I saw that picture and I'm like, I, I caught him. I did it. Like, this is what that was. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, and that was super yeah. rewarding because you're, and it, the best part was I did it by doing what he did. Hmm. I literally, yeah. Dante, yeah, you know, copied Dante was working with him, and I feel like that's the confusing thing that people just don't want to accept is the fact that you don't have to reinvent the wheel, but you also can't avoid the hard work consistently. I mean, I watched yeah. them train, and I was like, okay, that's what their training looks like. That's what mine must look like every single time. And I think it also reinforces what I mentioned about like how I've always thought about exercises. Like all those exercises that you listed are very, ba like, you, you know, you can get really strong on them <clears throat> and you can, you can really tax the body with those exercises. You know, you're locked in, you know, that sort of thing. And how I said, like, you know, back, like I've never really been a lunger. I just, I just didn't really feel like you could really go to failure on them. Cause like my idea of, why I'm in the gym was to do sets that are incredibly taxing. Right. And I just think, well, what's more taxing, like getting in, 
getting under a Smith and doing another set of deep squats to complete failure, you know, with a spotter or, you know, wrestling around a bar, getting it behind my neck, lunging outside in the parking lot. Can't really go to failure. Can't really get a spot. Like, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like I just, so, so exercise selection was always just like, what can I hit the hardest with? Like what high, what are the highest impact tools I have? And just repeat those for 10 years. Yeah. Well, that, that's why I love uh, Matt Jansen's like slogan, like do the hard stuff. Yeah. That's where yeah. things get missed. It's, you know, I talk about it regularly uh, at home um, when we're talking about what we're picking to do in the gym. Because to me, it's simple. Like there's a reason everyone and, and I, I'm picking a movement I like. There's a reason people love to go to the hammer, hammer row and row on it. Because no matter how you cut it, that's easier than putting a bar on the ground, putting a bunch of weight on and doing barbell rows. Oh, yeah. It's a pain in the ass in every way. You got to load it up. You got to lift the end. The whole thing is a pain in the ass. It's harder. So that's literally my advice to young guys. I'm like, do the most basic things and perfect them. Then eventually when you yeah. want to tool around with that row, it's fine. But I'm telling you, when when the thing happened that we were all at the gym for a couple of years ago, and I had to go to a gym that didn't have any of that equipment, and I was forced back to a barbell on the ground, I got really strong again, my back got really big again, and I was like, why did I get away from this? This is the stuff that works, you know? So that's always my push. I'm like, if we have a bar, gravity, and weight, we're ready for back day. We're good to go. Right, right. Yeah, yeah keeping it simple, you know? What about you, Scott? Are you, I want to hear. I want to hear because I, I liked you. I know some of your story as far as variations. Yeah. But what What was it, and and what made it different that made you uh, grow the best? Well, I would say that for a lot of my bodybuilding, I feel like the training was creative and it was fun and it was really hard and it was higher volume. And I feel like it honestly was the food and the drugs that were the driver. And Mm -hmm. later when I did start getting into more progressive overload and I just decided like, I'm going to try to learn to get as strong as I can. Then I started growing with really low drugs and not doing anything with my diet, like eating, like I was kind of like, you know, that semi retired, I'm still eating bodybuilding food, but I'm not really being super strict with it. I make sure I get all my protein in and, and you know what, I'm going to get a little extra carbs in cause I'm training hard today, that kind of thing. And I'm like, Holy shit, I'm, I'm getting big, you know? Right. Yeah. Right. And, and it really did open my eyes. I will say one body part that I really struggled with for a while was hamstrings. I learned how to grow my quads and, and, and you see this a lot, you know, you see guys that like that early stage of you're building a physique you, your shoulders start growing faster than your chest. Quads start growing faster than, than the hams, that kind of thing. And, mm-hmm. and, and I still didn't have a good back yet. But uh, I, I started doing um, hamstring curls the way John Meadows would do them in, in Shelby. And we we're you know doing a lot of mountain dog stuff. And I, what I started doing is I started really controlling the negative, driving it down as hard as I freaking could, trying to like slam that thing into the bottom if I could but not letting it bounce back up, holding it there, okay? Yeah. Contract those hamstrings like I'm trying to freaking make them spasm for like one full second and then just slowly let it up. And I, I did that exact same hamstring curl every time I trained legs, leaning forward to kind of like get a little bit of a stretch yeah. in it. And, and one day I realized that I had worked my way pretty far up the stack. You say machine every week, you know, and I realized, wow, I'm able to control this with a lot more weight now. And and I kind of like felt the back of my leg in, around that same time. And I was like, man, I got a, I've got a lot more ham. And then I took a picture and I could see it like I didn't see it. You know what I mean? Right. right. And, and then it but like it transformed my hamstrings from being like mediocre and, and missing really to being mm-hmm. like a legit muscle group. And they've honestly, they've never gone away since then. Like I've I've still held on to them. That's awesome. That's funny. I remember um, back when I was, I think I was just like nine, two years after high school. I remember my hack squat, I got up to five plates on the hack squat. And this was like an old school hack squat that had like wheels on it. 
you know, it wasn't on rails. Oh yeah. So like, (laughs) and I was doing five plates on that hack. And I remember like, I would have only been like 19 years old, but everyone in the gym was like, Holy, you're strong on those. And I was probably bouncing a bit out of the bottom, you know, like they were, they were nothing wrong with a little, little aggressive. (laughs) I, I was being aggressive on that thing. And, um, and I remember I took my monthly measurements and, um, you know, I was running like one of my first cycles. I was probably just taking a bit of test or something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, um, I took my monthly measurements and my legs were up like half an inch from the month before. Hmm. And I remember I was like, huh. And then like, (laughs) cause I, I, I'd seen my legs grow over time. I had like years of measurements, but they were really doing, they were really growing. And then like the next month I measured and they were up again, like noticeable, like a couple eights. And I was like, man, this is really going well, especially my legs. And I remember thinking, you know, I'm really focusing on my hack squat. Yeah. It's been yeah. like my main focus for legs. Like everything else was secondary. Like it was all about what I was going to hack squat. Yep. And, and I was just <clears throat> really putting everything into that particular exercise. And then that's, I remember that just triggered in me like, wow, I think hacks are really good for me. Like, mm-hmm. what, you know, some exercise like Dusty picks weights up and his back looks like that, you know? And I just remember thinking like, oh, I've, I haven't never seen like even my previous cycle or whatever. I didn't see my legs grow that rate. Yeah. And I remember just like little things like that. It kind of make you think like, oh, this is the exercise for me, you know? So I was stuck with hacks as like a real kind of rule, you know? Before the pendulum sure. squat days. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Backs when gym, gyms were simple. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what else we got here. How about this one? Um, enjoy the program. You guys are great. 48 years old. Started lifting again at 40 after not doing anything for 20 years. I've been making great progress and being completely natural, not even TRT. He's getting 315 for reps on incline bench, 405 for reps on squat. This is at 48. 405 for reps on deads. Question, I took two weeks off lifting and I also had a massage during that two weeks. Now I'm back and I lost as much as 70 pounds on my lifts. Is that typical? No. (laughs) <laughs> i would say i would say no that's not typical um and the massage didn't hurt you if anything it would have helped um but it also might come back really quick too like yeah you know i i mean i i know from personal experience from running like actual trt now that you know if i miss let's say i take a week off like you know we used to you know how i would take a week off as like a deload and yeah. then you come back to the gym and like nothing's changed right now if i take a week off for like a deload i come back to the gym and some of the lifts are down like it, it's not the same so yeah i don't know just it'll come back up though just stick with it Drive this is the work. biggest thing that i would t- say is um and i do this with all my clients on our plan deloads is we don't go back trying to hit those old numbers right away so if somebody yeah, was on just- like a 12 week blast and then they go, we do our deload for two weeks. I'll go back five weeks. I'm like, look at those numbers. Start there. Right. And, 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 and you might be gassed to the hilt and could have done the newest numbers again. But I find, I shouldn't say I find, let me rewind. I was taught by Dante and then he was correct in my you know, experience is if you go right back to your old numbers, even if you can beat them, you shorten the next blast because you're going to hit a wall faster for what you can do. Um, right. And I know that doesn't make a lot of sense to people because they're thinking, well, aren't you just going in there and doing the max you can anyways, but you're going based off of other numbers. So if I go and look at a weight from five weeks ago uh, and I got 12, I, I might get 13, 14 today, which is a higher you know total on a straight set than I would have gotten. And then next week I'm making, or I should say next time I hit that movement, I'm making the decision off of that 14 reps. So yeah, over yeah. time, it's going to go longer. So I wouldn't worry at all. I would say the biggest problem that he had there is that he tried to go back to those numbers. It wouldn't have been where I started anyways. Right, right. Yeah. Don't sweat it. Just get a few workouts under your belt. Yeah. You know, and if that, just and like coming game. back from, you know, come back from the flu when you're 15 pounds mm-hmm. down. You just you know, cycle blood through all your muscle tissue a couple of times and you'll feel right out. Yeah. You know, agreed. Okay. Here's an interesting one. Um, he says, as a strict Eastern Orthodox Christian, I have to fast every Sunday, 12 a.m. to 12 p.m. when we partake in communion. And during Lent and Advent, 
Um, we also fast 12 hours a day for 40 days each. Um, have you had any clients that had to work around this? And is it something that I should approach my bishop to get a dispen looks like dispensation dispensation? Um, I am not a competitive bodybuilder, just a guy trying to get leaner and in better health and keeping up with my five grandkids all under seven. He says he's 63 going on 64 and he's all oh. natty and his testosterone levels show that they are still in the normal range <clears throat> for his age. I'm going to add that part. Uh, in. There's the important <laughs> line. Um, <clears throat> Well, I mean, first off, I know the answer for all three of us. And yes, I've worked with people that does this. And I'm sure you both have as well. Uh, I don't find a 12 hour fast is really hard to work around. It just means no. that we're, we're eating more. I mean, all you're telling me is I'm, I'm assuming that you uh, sleep at night like most people. So it means if you're waking up at six in the morning, there's six hours before you can eat again. That's not really a huge deal to me, and I can I could roll it th roll through your Lent time as well, and, and it wouldn't be an issue. Um, as far as uh, the question about asking your bishop, that's that's up to you and, and and what these things mean to you. But as a coach, I could work around it without it being a problem at all. Yeah, I agree. Same thing. I worked with a guy that was doing Ramadan. Yeah, me too. I mean, that was harder. <laughs> and it like and it like overlapped with part of his prep. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. So we were just strategic about nighttime eating and having a shake in the middle of the night and, you know, just keeping to it, you know, best he could. He got in really good shape. I've I seen that like with one a thing guys that's now. good for you to think about on the uh on the religious side, which I am not, but because it's important to you, um, if you're executing these things and you're able to stay within what you want to do religiously while doing this i think that both should feel like bigger victories you know because I, I feel like that's where things get slippery for a lot of people is you've got your views of of religion and then you got your views of the world and then you decide to which one you're going to let tug you in what direction it's cool when you can stay strong on both so there's no reason you shouldn't in this case yeah 12 or, hours or be like me and just eat whatever you want um <clears throat> anyway 12 hours is easy you know 12 hours it's easy yeah and remember what are the what's 95 percent of it eating the food totals and doing the yep. workouts yep yep i don't care That's when it. you eat them do you guys should we tell him to maybe get his labs checked again and look at maybe uh i don't know i don't know i don't know because he's he's in the normal range for a 65 year old Is i don't that, like uh, that yeah. i don't like i don't that like sentence. the term range because truthfully and this isn't even a push on anything but like a doctor could tell you that when you feel like shit. Yeah, well, you're in range. Well, all the other guys that are your like age, that are did. dying at your age yeah. are in the same range as you. You know, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but, yeah. but even and, if you were in a high end of normal, if you don't feel as good, that's not okay. <clears throat> like you can adjust that. And I, the thing I remind people is, had he went to bed at 20 years old and woke up the next day with his hormones where they are now, he would go to the hospital because he would be like something is wrong. I when they say terrible. when they say average, you have to remember that the average American is I, think, I can't remember the number. I thought it was thirty five pounds overweight and has a thousand dollars in the bank. So you don't ever want to be hmm. average. <laughs> so when they say, "Oh, you're right in the average, right in that average zone," it's like, no, no, I yeah, nothing about this is going to stay there. <laughs> do, do, do you know what's funny? I, I have to share this to get me in trouble, but. Um, I had to go to the uh, a counselor's office with my oldest daughter at one point, and she's like, yeah, our GPA is a 3.0, which is right where you want it to be. It's right in the average. And I'm like, we're promoting that? Yeah, right. No, 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 no. You know, it's like, wait, whoa, whoa, we did I'm not shooting for average. But it was the way it was presented to me. Like, I don't give a shit what her grades are because she's killing it every other way. But it's just funny to me when it was presented that way. Like, it's excellent. Yeah, it's right average. There. I'm like, it can't be both. It can either be excellent or it can be average. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> yeah. Very odd to me. But <clears throat> at any rate, that's why we don't care about school. Um, <clears throat> moving forward. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we don't care about school. That's why we teach money around here. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh. I, man, I honestly think sometimes like, 
I've been watching a lot of like financial YouTube videos, you know, mm-hmm. and um, and the one and a few of them talked about like how un you know how the schools don't do anything to educate people on finance whatsoever. Nothing, right? <laughs> like nothing, and it almost seems like it's on purpose because they did like you know you do the math on the people that are taught finance at a young age like you know take a hundred dollars a month and invest it into the s p 500 or something or mutual funds or and then you know save for this and you know about you know budget for this and just awareness and like how credit card debt works and just all these things that they don't tell anybody and if and if you do the math on like kids that are taught it when they come out of high school and where people wind up on average 30 years later they're just like astronomical the differences yeah. you know they're out it outpaces school by far because you know school doesn't guarantee money right yeah. so yeah pretty crazy but things are definitely if you can educate yourself financially that's like the number one most important tool so you know well, plus you can do that before lucky. you have that's why you can do it before <laughs> you have money that's the confusing thing like that i did wrong is i didn't know anything about money when i started making it which just meant i wasted more yeah. That's what people yeah. don't get. It's like, no, no, no. You want to learn this when you have none. You know, oh, you, you can only put $40 away a month. Great. Put it away. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. that. That's okay. You don't want to be to the point where you could put away 4000 but you don't because you're a moron. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> so, yeah, it was interesting. But, uh, you know, I will say she had one class last semester that was all about it. And it was amazing. She's bringing stuff home. I'm like, this guy's teaching you this? This oh, is the wow. only good okay. teacher you have. I mean, it was yeah. phenomenal. Every, every day it was a conversation. I'm like, you're learning something worth learning. This is awesome. I remember, <laughs> I'll, I'll never forget my, my favorite teacher was uh, my economics teacher. And mm-hmm. he, back in the day, like this was the 90s, but like you wouldn't be able to do this now. But he used drug dealing as like, he was always <laughs> talking in like drug dealing terms. He's like, okay, if you have a kilo of cocaine, and the market dictates this, and he's like talking about supply and demand, and this, and he would always use like hilarious examples. You yeah, know? He's like, he so yeah, thirty-two k is like thirty-two k worth of fucking cocaine. <laughs> well, we're gonna cut that. He was a bit of a gangster K. teacher. Yeah, he was awesome. Yeah. He's like Ron. You understand kilos, anyways. Um. <laughs> okay, so there's a high demand for prostitutes, but there's only this many prostitutes. <laughs> the whole class is like looking at each other. <laughs> Ron and Becky are at the front, going, "Uh huh, uh-huh. uh-huh. yeah." So, like, so where are these prostitute. prostitutes from? <laughs> um, are these? Do they have do they have passports, or are they no passport type prostitutes? Like we need to know. In the my details experience, here. they're from Calgary, but anyways. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, like, sorry. All, all the Canadians will yeah. get that joke. Um, yeah, <laughs> and, there's, and and for some reason they're always on a boat in Kelowna. <laughs> this is all over my head. Boats. All, this is all, all the over Canadi- my head. All boats. the Canadians are getting all of this right now. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Scott doesn't know about boats in Kelowna. No, nothing. <laughs> okay, nothing. just. It's a Google for later, buddy. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. I now What's have a client from my gym Googling that right now. But anyways, go ahead. <laughs> All right. I've now like probably offended like half the people I know that like to go to Kelowna for summer vacation. Every girl I met in Calgary is also mad at me right now. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. You. I was talking about the other one. I wasn't necessarily laughing at, the, at, at, at Calgary specifically, but I just was laughing that you picked a city. That made it funny well, to had, me. I had experience. Because then that made me think, he's, Dusty's got some skin in the game. There's, <laughs> Literally. Jeez. <laughs> you know, that says more about you than it does about Calgary. I'll have to ask Calgary my wife after after my wife um, listens. I'll have to ask her what this means. Scott's like, I'm an honorary Canadian, but I'm not this Canadian. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You don't even pick the city. You haven't gotten in any trouble in Canada yet, buddy. Um, yeah. All right. So we had yeah. another one. It says, question. When you first start lifting, you feel and perceive yourself to be way better than you actually are. And then um, as you've gotten better, you actually make uh, and you make progress. You never feel like you're good enough and only see it um, like when you look back at old pictures. Yeah. So he says, is that true or is it just me? That's true. (laughs) Yeah. I, I, I don't. Like, I don't mean to sound like it's like, you know, I don't be, I don't want to be a downer thing, but 
I literally didn't really ever like my physique. Like, you know what I mean? I look back now at some of my pictures and I'm like, man, I really was, you know, like, I can't believe I look like that at any point in time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And at the time, I was just so critical of everything. And I see guys now who have, you know, good physiques, like coming up national level and stuff, and they're really critical of themselves. And I understand it, but I also want to make sure they, they take a minute and just enjoy where they've come and how far they've come you know like i try to help people i i know you're critical in every show you feel like you could have been a little better here a little better there but like try to also celebrate what you're doing and how you're how you like what you've achieved and how what you've built and stuff and that was a bit of that was lost on me because i was so competitive with myself you know i saw I feel it. like it's a good thing though like i agree yes. and i try to do the same thing but i also find that all of my best clients are that way because they're striving yeah. for more. And like you said, you, you just want to remind them, hey, just for this minute, just just right now, soak this up for 24 yeah. hours. And then tomorrow yeah. we will talk about your terrible. Yeah. E yeah. Um, <laughs> even, even just even just a bit of that, even just a bit of that. You know what I mean? I, I guess I'm, I'm saying like you want to recognize when there's misery being caused. Right. For no reason. It's you don't want true. that. You know what I mean? And I and I got to places like that. I, I had periods where I was just fucking like, you know what I mean? Got an F body. I love stuff. the disease of bodybuilding because <laughs> those things we all have, like, so you'll love this, Ron, but two days ago, I wake up in the morning and this is like the routine at my house. How'd you sleep? She goes, It happened. I'm like, what? She goes, I had the dream. Didn't have my tan on before the show. I go, had you shaved? She had that dream. Yeah. I go, had you shaved? She goes, hadn't shaved. And I was talking to my grandmother and I was late for prejudging. And I'm like, there it is. We all have There's it. It's the dream. <laughs> yep. Did uh, you ever have the dream you are where you in. like, you forget to drop your water or something? You forget oh, to take your diuretic? Yeah. I've, I've had that dream. I'm standing backstage. I look down. My arms aren't shaved. And yeah. I realized I forgot, yeah. to, I forgot to take, I was supposed to take like half a tab of diazide in my dream. You didn't oh, take yeah. it. I forgot to take it, and I looked down and realized I hadn't shaved my arms, didn't have my tan on, hadn't taken I, my diuretic. I had one trying to shave backstage in the mirror. What well, like all my class was pumping up, and I was like, I gotta get this finished. You know, <laughs> so, I think it's so great though because everyone can relate to that that body builds. Yeah. And when I used to play hockey, I would occasionally have a dream that I got in a fight, and I was like throwing like cotton balls at the guy, like. Oh. And you're, like yeah, you're, you're throwing struggling. whatever you have, and it's like, bleh, and the guy's like looking at you, like, "What are you doing?" It's like super slow motion. I've had you're that, just getting yep. handled, <laughs> like, <laughs> and so it's like every. I, I assume that means every sport has a thing because I would tell the guys like, "Oh yeah, I've had that." Yeah, and you're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Wait, also, I I've mentioned this before, but way before I competed, I had to. I would have a training <clears throat> dream all the time. Um, it wasn't prep related, but it was just workout related. I'd be I'd be in the gym and I'd be about to do my big set of something, incline Smith or squats or leg press or something. And then right when I'm about to do my set, I'd realize oh, I forgot to tie my shoe. Oh, <laughs> and I have to tie my shoe. And then I get under the bar again and oh, someone took a plate off one side. The hell that guy there didn't realize I was using this and he took a plate off it. So I got put plate back on and then getting all psyched up and realize my spotter hasn't walked over. I'm looking and my spotters talking to someone. I'm like, geez, and this frustration. And I remember one time I had that dream and I was on a cruise ship. So I was like on a cruise ship in the cruise ship gym trying to have a workout. And I was just getting so frustrated and I'd wake up in like an angry cold sweat. I just want to do a set of squats. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. And that would happen all the time. And the setting would change. The gym would change. But it would always be the same idea. That's amazing. That is freaking amazing. I haven't had that. So, But yes, my point was just that we all have those things like the never being happy with the look. And every bodybuilder that's worth the salt has definitely forgotten to shave in his drink. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Justin Shire posted this picture, these this side by side the other day. He said this was like is off season 16 weeks out and then at 255 and then 225 at 2 weeks out. And he said that he was he's like I look at these pictures and I wasn't happy with either of these. 
He's like, and I look at, I look back at him now, and I'm only remotely happy. And somebody commented, and they didn't get it. They're like, they're like, you know, well, when are you gonna begin to prioritize your quality of life and and true happiness? And he was like, "You don't get it, man. Like this is what we do. Like this, this is if, the if, happiness. Yeah. If you were if you were happy, <laughs> yeah. you'd be done. Really. You know what I mean? Why would right, you try right, harder? Right. right? You know yeah. what? My that, that like, a great thing about that picture because I just had this conversation with a client yesterday. He said, uh, "I'm looking at my pictures and I and the calories because obviously we're dieting down. Yeah. Because is it possible that I'm getting bigger? And I said, no. <laughs> but you definitely look bigger." Yeah. I mean, you look at those yeah. two pictures, like it's very obvious which version of Justin looks bigger. The one oh, that's yeah. 25 pounds lighter. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, no, no, he, I mean, it looks morphed. He's so much bigger, you know? His so, arms didn't change an inch either. Like he didn't lose anything no. in his arms. No. no I the think just the came secret down a ton. is yeah. blue and teal. I think if yeah. I were to wear blue, which I never did, I would have looked just like that. It's no. too close. Yeah, there's a chance. No, no. I did the okay. wet look turquoise in my early days. <laughs> yeah, I still would suck. But anyways, yes, uh, I think it's funny that somebody didn't get that, though. He's like, no, I'm. that's a good thing. I that's do think I, if you ever were to look at your pictures and say, like, I'm awesome, like, you are screwed. <laughs> yeah, you're, very, very, yeah, yeah, you're done. And look you how fantastic just like something. Ronnie Coleman. Yeah. 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 Because I guarantee you, when Ronnie walked off stage after annihilating everyone in, in 03, him and Chad said, what do we got to do to beat this? Yeah. He wasn't beating anyone else yeah. anymore. Dorian yeah, yeah, never yeah. was competing against anyone else, which, by the way, Ron, I'm gonna need, I need homework from you. She never followed Dorian, so she doesn't know like all the what? quotes and all the things that he oh, has yeah. said and done over the years. I'm like, oh, we got we got podcasts, homework, kid. You got things okay. to do. Because <laughs> I, I, you know, that was his whole thing is he was competing alone. Yeah. It was just what can I do to beat me because there's no one else to compete with, you know? Yeah, yeah. That, did you yeah. see that one that he put up the other day? Um, I'll just send The it tape between his legs? What's that? Yes. Where he put the tape between his legs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That picture. Yeah, I know. Dante sent it to me as well. Mind-boggling perfection. Like, yeah, I don't know if you saw. Yeah, the, the, some of the people that say stuff like, uh, you know, oh well, Dorian wasn't the prettiest. <laughs> I'm like, man, there is a, like his physique. I mean, it's balanced as all hell. You send it to Scott. I'm just Let's throw this picture up. Cool. Yeah, I just looked for it. I didn't see it. Also, yeah, too, on his Instagram. Well, two things uh, you need to know. Number one, that is called um, wallpaper for those who don't know behind him. And number two, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get it, Scott? Yeah. Uh, I'm waiting for it to come through. And while I wait for that, I will also say uh, uh, look for a question, guys, like a good finishing. We need like a good finisher as I try to pull this up. Do you send it on Instagram? I sent it to your what's like your oh. phone number that's on your computer. Yeah, no, I'm, it's probably coming. Oh, it's I got on it. Its way. I got it. Ron has it. Yeah, it's probably on yeah. its way here. Who knows? Lost in the. I'll just, I'll just send it to your phone real quick. I always forget for whatever reason when you started texting us off your computer one time. It went to you a, and Ron are on a computer one, so I sent it to your phone just now. Uh, okay, okay. Oh, really? Huh. Yeah, yeah so something got screwed up on for that. A it, it's your phone number and his like. Well, I see in rem oh, yeah, email. I, yeah. Yeah. I got to get rid of that. Scott's, you know. This yeah. is a mess. I got it on my <laughs> phone and I can send it to myself. Why don't you guys find something, though? Find a good, we need a good finisher question. Something to leave the people with, uh, you know, with with feeling like they, they've they tuned into something worthwhile and that they're uh, happy to leave on a good note. <laughs> and I'm gonna try to pull Jeez, this. Up no here. pressure. Yeah. <laughs> well, and this thing, uh, this it took me only. We're doing so took me, well. Already. Took me two hours to find this picture. By the way, this is incredible. Yeah, I just that's 93, right? 93. Yeah. 93. Okay. And that is wallpaper. Before any of the injuries. Yeah. Look at that table yeah. behind Look. him. Kind of. Kind of furniture. Do you have? Was that his mom's house or something? 
<laughs> it looks like it should have been. No. You know what I mean? The nineties, no, bro. No. <laughs> That's as good as it was. Yeah. <laughs> so just think, think like, you know, oh, the, just think, you know, he's a reigning Mr. Olympia in this picture, right? Yeah. Cause he won in 92. And yeah. that's a TV he's watching. Is that a, a little twenty inch? Is that a VHS? Uh, yeah, oh yeah, all in one. Okay. Yeah, it looks like it. That's nice. <laughs> that's, that's fancy. <laughs> it's really classy for the time. Yeah. No judgment. No judgment. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It's just a different time, man. It's funny. Old school. Hey, I had something I wanted to tell you guys about. Um, we, we always get questions about like that people want to hear about investment stuff. So when I was a kid, my dad would put like a little money away for me here and there. And I remember we got involved with um, what was called like the Internet Fund, Technologies Fund um, with Janice right. years ago. And he put like just a small amount of money away for me. And then over the years, obviously, from since like 92, uh, that's growing a lot, you know. But it's not anything you're going to like retire off of. It's not like a Bitcoin or something. But it's right, it's, right. it's a way that you can. Sure, nice to have. Yeah, you can put your savings in there. Anyway, I got involved in um, the Vanguard Federal Money Market Fund this year. And it's so basically I, I don't know what I wanted to do with some little bit of money I had put away. And it was just sitting in savings, which that's like the worst thing you can do. Right. Dusty? You're losing money. Yeah. 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 You're losing money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like a, it's basically a mutual fund and it's federally insured. So like you are right. guaranteed not to lose anything on it. And it's actually like made money. It's like made decent money. So it's right. kind of cool. It's kind of cool. And obviously the more you put in, the more you make back. But yeah, I put a little bit of money in that and it's cool. I get a monthly report. So I wanted to throw that out there for anybody who's listening, who's maybe in that position where they've got like a couple thousand dollars in the bank and they're like, hey, I'm going to save this long term. You could pull it out any time, you know, and, yeah. and you're going to make more money off of it than just sitting in the bank. You could do it all yeah, yourself. too. Like, you don't need like some help or anything. You just do it all. on Yeah. Your own. Like Dusty said, people forget that if if they're just sitting on cash, technically they're losing money because of inflation. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, your cash is slowly worth less and less and less and less when you sit on it. So that's something you got to keep in mind, especially when you start accumulating any sort of savings. So, you know, yeah, definitely. Good advice. I had I a guy I last week. <clears throat> oh, go, go ahead, ahead. Ron. No, I was just going to oh, say, I don't bring I, up I, stuff like that because, honestly, I have a professional that I work with. Yeah. And one thing that I'm adamant about, especially in, the, in our world, I do not ever want to be somebody who's speaking out of turn. So when people go, do you have investment advice? I'm like, no. Yeah. And that's no, why okay. I can't like I, I can't give you expert advice. I would send you to my guy who would give you expert advice. So it's like I, I even sometimes I've said some things and I'm like, oh man, and I'll verify with him. I'm like, was that wrong? And he's like, No, you're fine. I'm like, whew. Yeah. Because you just I, don't want to be that guy that's giving out advice. Like, and then somebody who's listening to the show that's like a financial expert's like, Dusty's a moron. Or Don't worse, lose somebody that. loses money because they listen yeah. to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? No, but my my financial advice to people is yes. <laughs> like, take action. Educate yourself. You've yeah. got to start mm. saving somehow. There's a lot of different ways you can invest and save. But if you're not investing and saving, then you're truly setting yourself up for a rough future. So yeah. my advice is like, I had a 22 year old kid ask me last week, like, what should I do to make sure that I, you know, have the money to body build? And I was like, well, first of all, set yourself up in life. So start in investing, start saving money, putting some money away, start making a budget, you know, that sort of thing. Like, you know, like what Dusty's given the help and helping to give the gift of financial literacy to the, to those two girls. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's awesome. That's, that's, that's the tip. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and the yeah. thing, too, is like the reason I brought this up is because it's one of those things that like you don't need to have like you're not going to be if you have like two thousand bucks that you want to do something more than just put it in the bank. You're not going to get a guy like guy's not going to. Oh, yeah. The, the guy's not going to take time yeah. out of his day for you. You know what I mean? But but yeah. it is a step better than the bank. Is it going to be like your biggest? Oh, turnover? Yeah. You know, you're going to make the biggest uh, returns well, on it. Probably not. But. It's it's still insured, very true. you know. Very, very yeah, true. you know, pretty a, a pretty they say a pretty safe long term thing. Like you know, on on average, doesn't the S and P five hundred outperform most hedge funds? If you just go long term, like yeah. over twenty over years, years yeah. Of time, yeah. yeah. So 
you know, even if you're just doing those, those ETFs and stuff, those are a, kind of a, a real, you know, relatively uh, smart and, and safe choice if you're going to get into that type of thing too. Yeah. So, yep. Okay. I can't remember what they were, what they are now, but <clears throat> I remember back in the day when I first started, those things were like, I think it was over seven years, might have been nine. They're averaging 12%. So, I mean, that's an, that was enormous then. Now, I don't know what it is now, but it's really, continued right. since then. But it was like, that's a big number. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. You know, to be, to be locking those in. And, and you nailed it, Ron. Like, I make the girls save 20% of every dollar they make. And right now it's just saving and then in time it'll become other things but it's just my my initial plan is get used to living off of 80 percent of what you make because most people live off 110 percent of what they make <laughs> right right yeah <laughs> yeah you don't want to be there i i read how's this for uh uh i love these stories um so do you guys know who duff mckagan is oh yeah yes. He's the, the bass player, the ba bass player from Guns N' Roses, right? Mm -hmm. He's got a ra radio show on Sirius with his wife, Three Chords in the Truth. I love it. Anyways, he's a, he's a great guy. I like Duff. And uh, I was reading about him. I can't remember where I read it, but I guess in 1993, if you think, that was when Guns N' Roses released the Use Your Illusion 1 and 2 albums. Oh, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So they had like that double album in 93 there with November Rain and all those huge hits. And I guess that's when they really made a lot of money because, you know, Appetite was a massive hit. But, you know, by, by, by the early 90s, they were really making money. Those tours were making the millions. And um, he thought, you know, I don't want to be a broke 60-year-old rock and roller, so I should invest some of my money. And he thought, you know, I really, he's from Seattle, so he thought, I want to invest in my own community. So he looked around at Seattle companies and he thought, well, I'll invest in in these companies he invested in starbucks he invested in amazon <laughs> oh geez <laughs> he invested in like a bunch of these local seattle companies yeah. right Whoops. and then was, yeah yeah and so i guess duff mckagan is, has made more in the stock market investments he's made than from all of the music he's ever written and sold and been involved with yeah no kidding so, yeah. Dude, I was, as soon as you said Seattle, I'm like, tell me you're going to use the word Starbucks at Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bought a bunch of Starbucks stock. You know, he had probably had several million at that point ready to just put somewhere, you know? So yeah. Victoria was telling me about some a, a rapper. I can't remember who he was, but he's like heavily involved in the car wash industry. And he like, I don't know if you guys have them where you're at, Dusty, but we're getting these new car washes. And it's like a club where you do like a monthly fee. You come as many, Yeah, you come as many I times have, as you I, want. I have four of them. Do, <laughs> do you? Every, every car in our house has one of those memberships. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, the, the, the new car wash. And like, I know a guy um, that I actually got in recovery with. We both, I knew him from high school. We both ended up getting in recovery about the same time. And now he's building those car washes. He'll get like a loan and then he'll have that car wash built and then he flips it basically. And he's uh, that that's what he's doing for business. But this guy, this rapper, he's like, it's not a sexy thing, but he gets involved in these car washes and that's like where all of his money goes that he makes with rapping and then he turns it around. I wish I could remember who it was, but it's not so something you think of, you know, you, you think of rappers and you think of like, oh, he's in the weed industry or something like that, you know? Right. Well, hey, I mean, I think that, it was... I mean, that's such an obvious great business. So, I mean, who doesn't wash their car? I mean, even yeah. people who don't wash their cars wash them occasionally. Yeah. And you can go in there and pay hand over fist if you want to buy one wash. You know you who know, else so likes you, car washes? The me. Mob. The mob. There we go. See? Further me again. Our, arcades. <laughs> Not a lot arcades, of products. Yeah. Not a lot of products. different. Yeah, yeah a little, a little something called uh, uh, laundry mats. Um, yeah, laundry mats. Right. <laughs> Wait, are we still giving? Are we still giving advice to people here? This is financial <laughs> advice. Also, it's just different. It's a different financial advice. This is from Ron's teacher, I believe. <laughs> so, well, after you make the, the money biggest, selling the yeah yeah. <laughs> what one of the biggest business guys is Shaq. Do you guys know Shaq owns oh, over yeah. fifty? over 50 different businesses, like different brands that he owns. Papa John. No kidding. And, yeah. yeah. He's got 150 car washes. He's got 155 Five Guys burgers. Wow. He's got he likes five 19, guys. Pa 19 Papa John's, 17 Auntie Anna's pretzels, okay. and a handful That's of a crispy, crispy creams. Huh. He also own, he also owns 60 24-hour fitness locations. Dang. Yeah. Like he's, he just... 
Man, sixty all that money. That's amazing. You could think yeah. too, like he wouldn't really need to do any of that. I bet he could probably just sit on his money oh, and well, like yeah, he do whatever he wanted. You know, try to spend it as fast as he can and run out of time doing it. Yeah, you know. Yeah. That's the- <laughs> I always think that that's cool though. I, I was just watching. I don't know. Do you guys watch that? Uh, I don't know if it's called a documentary, but a short thing on uh, Kelsey that uh, is on Netflix or whatever it is. But it's um. They're, they're looking, you know, they're talking about a guy who he's trying to figure out what he's going to do. He retired this year, just barely has announced his retirement from football. And he's talking about what he's going to do. And he's like, oh, I'm thinking about real estate and all these different things. I haven't even finished watching it. But what I loved about it was, is while he's talking, I'm like, quick Google, what is he worth? And I know these aren't accurate because mine isn't fully accurate. But I went and looked and it was like $40 million. And I'm like, wow, he has no plans. They're just chilling. He's like, right. all right, now what am I going to do? And I wish more people understood that because my mom died attempting to retire. Mm. And I'm like, I, the thought of retirement is disgusting to me. Like, I, I want to do something. I mean, it'll be something I fun I want to do. But, like, I can't imagine just being like, all right, I'm going to stay home now. Yeah. And Sounds then what? awful. And then what? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean. I'm going to make Scott do another podcast, what I'm going to do. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, like you said, I mean, it's like Shaq – has so much money his kids 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 can't spend it all but he's just in the game and i love that yeah 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 there's uh you see that uh andrew tate reel um it came through my youtube and it was andrew tate and he said he someone said like what's the limit of money and he said 20 million he said Un- unless you want a yacht or a plane 20 million is the limit where nothing above that makes any difference whatsoever. Huh, and right. he was saying, because when you get to the 20 million part, you have so many, your money is making so much money for you that you can literally just try and waste it and you'll, you'll never run out. That is crazy. And he said, right. and he said, you know, but if you want a yacht or an airplane, you need more than 20 million. Cause that's going to be a big vacuum of like maintenance and constant taking yeah. care of. And you have to hire. Yeah. It's like, it's like you have to like basically own a company to take care of your yacht and your plane. Right. <laughs> yeah. So he said, but if you don't want a yacht or a plane, nothing makes a difference over 20 million. And I just thought that was pretty funny that, you know, that's, that was his ceiling, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's we're almost there boys. To find those, to find those lines. I, uh, a friend of mine bought a, uh, a, uh, uh, like a condo in Dana point. So he goes and he puts the offer on the place and everything. And then there was a holdup and the holdup was the real estate agent couldn't find the owner. So they had to call around and eventually his pilot called the guy who drove his yacht and he was out on the yacht and they had to like, he's like, oh, he had forgot he had that house, (laughs) this whole thing. And I'm like, wait, so your pilot had to call the captain of your ship that you were on and then someone had to remind you what is happening in this world and and why isn't there someone else that can sign off on this? Like, yeah, just, right, right. It was like, and it was obviously that wasn't like a long process, but it was just a funny thing. He goes, you won't believe this. I'm trying to buy like my coolest little thing and this guy forgot he ever owned it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I still got you know. that? Is there anybody in that? He probably yeah. had, and it was funny as in my, his, my real estate uh, agent that had, had, had that deal goes, he probably never knew he owned. He probably never saw it. Like that was just a thing right. that someone bought or, you know what I mean? Yeah. But right. for whatever reason, he was required on some piece of it, which I guess isn't normal either. But it just, that's that 20 million mark. When you said that about a pilot, I was like, yeah, I heard of a guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that couldn't be. You can find me anytime, guys. I'm at my house. The yeah. one yeah. house. <laughs> I'm very easy to find. Okay. Well, is that it for the show, Scott? That's we did all our we best had. to completely come off the rails. I'm no, not we sure. Them, if we talked helped. about nothing. We gave them some uh, some financial um, aspirations at the end. I think we, it, was, yes. you know, it was uplifting. <laughs> Investing you know car washes. Yes. I, I, I wash I your car. Help. I didn't want to help anybody today. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Never the plan. Okay. <laughs> Remember, like, share, subscribe, comment, and ring the bell. There you go. Thank you very much. Remember, I am mutant.com, Dusty20, Big Ron20. Get your ISO surge, get your all in, and get on the gear. Oh. Thanks a lot, Scott. What's, what's, you got something? I do. 
mutant. Let's the go. The Arnold. We we should at least let people know because they may need to make plans. Guys, come out to the Arnold and see the three of us. We're all going to be at the mutant booth. And the oh, really okay, cool awesome. thing we'll have to we'll have to tell them this again for people that are not part of the last five minute crew. There is going to be like a little podcast setup that's going to be happening through the whole weekend. So please come up that's and right. say hi to us and stuff. And we're giving you time. I don't want to tell them last yes. minute. So they say, I would have gone, but I didn't know. You should have told me sooner. Right. And now, you okay. know, come so out. The to last five minutes. going to come to see us anyways, but whatever. That's all <laughs> and, 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 and Scott, uh, let's start pumping the links out for those shirts because people are asking me like crazy. Yes. So people are ordering the shirts, eh? They're going. Yeah, we're getting the the shirts are selling and people are freaking loving them. So I mean, what can I say? I, I I'll be honest with you. I didn't order your guys' shirts yet. That's the reason you didn't get them. So it was because I was uh, in the I, mail. Me. Oh yeah, that's I what saw, I mean. It's I in a, the mail. I don't know what happened. I have a client who has our shirt, <laughs> and you don't have our shirt. <laughs> and he wears better. it to the gym. So I go. I go. You know, I see it on him at the yeah. gym. You yeah. Know? So it's kind of funny. I had that happen. I had that happen when Mutant came out with the, the orange flavor of something recently. I had a client. Right. Goes, what, do, what do you think of the orange? And I'm like, orange what? He's like, you named the product. Have orange? I don't know about it. He goes, I ordered it online. Though. It's great. I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I never had it. I didn't know it existed. My clients tell me about it. He goes, I got the shirt. I'm on the juice. I'm like, <laughs> Great marketing. I was in the commercial. Was of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Right here okay. is where it says you loved it. Wait, what? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks, guys. Remember, everybody, it's just bodybuilding.